<laughs> Welcome back to the Cooking Without Looking TV show. I'm Alan Preston, and I'm very sorry to say that Annette Watkins isn't with us today. She's not feeling very well. Please get better soon, Annette. Today, we have a real variety of recipes for you. If you enjoy trying food from all over the globe, you're going to love our recipe from Ethiopia. And if you like down-home traditional American recipes, we have a recipe for homemade cornbread. Now, as you may know, everyone on our Cooking Without Looking TV show are blind, visually impaired, or severely low vision. So, let's get started with today's episode of the Cooking Without Looking TV show. Now, for centuries, Ethiopian culture has traditionally featured a wide range of rich and colorful vegetables, fruits, beans, and pulses as the core ingredient in many of their delicious vegan friendly recipes. Now, oddly enough, I think this was written for Annette because I know that she is a vegetarian. I think she's a vegan too. And did you know that vegan meals are up by more than 45% and vegetarian meals are up by more than 25% year over year? I find that kind of amazing. Well, even though our guest today is preparing traditional Ethiopian food, which sometimes includes beef, Ethiopian recipes are ideal for plant-based eating and that's what accounts for its recent rise in popularity. So today we are welcoming Abby Griffith, who came to the United States from Ethiopia as a child. She recently returned to Ethiopia, where she dropped off technology and equipment to blind youngsters. Thank you. So please welcome Abby Griffith. Abby, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Alan. Uh, hi, my name is Abby Griffith. Um, and like Alan mentioned, I um, went to Ethiopia uh, a couple months ago, May 28th, and I came back June 22nd. And I did um, set up technology lab for blind and visually impaired students in Ethiopia. Um, I purchased eight computers, um, 10 brailler, pork and brailers, uh, 32 silicon stylus, um, recorders and talking calculators, um, printers, embosser to print uh, braille, and all that stuff. And I set it up for students who do not have that before. And I'm excited. Thank you so much. Now, Abby, I understand you've had quite an amazing journey through blindness. Would you like to tell us a little about, a bit about that? About your journey through blindness through your life? Yes, I definitely can. Um, I lost First my all, sight. Are you totally blind or are you partially sighted? You have a little bit of eyesight. Okay. Yeah. So I said, are um, you totally blind? Yes, I'm totally blind. Ah, okay. Um, Keep going. <laughs> what was the question? Well, I just, I, I, I uh, asked you if you'd like to tell us a little bit about your uh, life as a blind person, you know, how did, how did it start out? Were you born this way? Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, Mary got kids, uh, uh, I don't know. Tell us a little bit about your journey through, through your life with blindness. Ooh, um, I am totally blind, like I said, and also I lost my sight at age of eight years old. And, um, I was born in Ethiopia and um, I was 14 years old when I moved here to US. And um, I, I went to college, two colleges here, um, community college and uh, university and got my bachelor's degree uh, 2021. That was two years, I think now, uh, yeah. And 
um, I am now working at a nonprofit organization called OPPO Environmental Justice Oregon. Um, and I am community organizer, Bus Riders Unite. Um, I don't know if, did that answer your question? That certainly did. That's quite an amazing story. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Uh, do you work with a guide dog or you use a cane? I use cane. Oh, <laughs> I'm a guide dog user. I was kind of wondering. Uh, let me see. So, to, so anyway, uh, that was really amazing. But we're a cooking show, and I would like you to tell us about our your recipe. Uh, we'd love to watch you prepare it. Awesome. Uh, should I start and uh, tell you when I'm working my food? Uh, please tell us what you're doing. Get started. It's called uh, Siga what? Yes, it's called the Siga what? Okay. Siga what has, I will be starting now and uh, um, telling as I go, um, Siga what is, Siga is meat, beef, very tender beef um, um, steak. <laughs> and I bought one pound of beef from Ethiopian store because when I make a cigar what, um, I don't buy meat from uh, regular grocery stores. So um, I can go to Ethiopian store and then buy from Ethiopian store. Right now, I will be going to the, my store. Um, I have pot, cooking pot right here. I will put one cup of water in the pot. Okay. And that's one cup of water to cook onion first. That's about a medium sized pot, am I right? Yes, it is medium sized pot. Um, but um, I usually don't like care if it's a bigger pot or a smaller pot, as long as you put all the ingredients, it's going to come out good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to start out with a pot that's too small. <laughs> what was that? I say I would not want to start out with a pot that was too small. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like, I like a beef. So right now, I have onions. Because I'm busy, uh, right now I'm taking uh, my lunch time to do this TV show, cooking show. So I bought um, chopped up onions. So I, it saves me time. Uh, it's already cut up to big yellow onion and uh, it's a dice and I'm gonna put it in the pot. You did say two in whole onions, right? Yes, big one. Two whole onions. Take the whole onions. Okay, I like onions. <laughs> of course, people don't like me very well afterwards, but that's okay. <laughs> now I turning. I um. I will be turning on the, my stove to medium high. Is that uh, electric or a gas stove? I'm curious. I have an electric heat stove. Okay. And um, my stove is on, my onions in the pot, medium sized pot. And uh, usually, um, when I turn on my stove, what I do is lightly just touch around the, the pot to see if it's on or off. That's how I tell. Uh, I, don't get, yes. I don't get bored in my hand, don't worry. <laughs> I understand. You want to do that in the very beginning before that burger gets too hot. I do understand. Yes. <laughs> so right now I put my onion in one cup of cup of measuring cup of water. And I stir onion to make it just a mix with the water. Okay. And I will be putting the lid in the now it's covered and going um, when I'm getting plates to put the spoon, steering the spoon, so. 
This is your own home, am I correct? This what is, is your that? kitchen? Huh? This is your home kitchen? Yes. So you know where everything is, right? I do. That's because you put it there, right? Yes. Part of the secret to, to being able to cook is knowing where everything is. How do you mark things? Do you mark it with Braille or do you use other methods? Um, I don't, I have a microwave marked with a Braille, but um, it faded out. But um, usually I just get um, familiar with when before it fall out. But my oven is marked with a Braille. Yes. Okay. And also my uh, covered that uh, my plates was of course I don't have to mark that uh I usually buy different sides of barrels like if it's oil I know what it looks like and other spices and stuff uh, and the you... shape of the bottle yes yes and right now my onions cooking I'll be cutting meat uh so one thing I wanted to tell is that like tender meat, one pound I bought is not cut up or not ground beef. So I buy a whole chunk and I cooked it earlier, uh, early morning this morning. Okay. So um, it doesn't take me too long. So I put half pot of water and I put that meat inside and I put medium high and it cooked, um, slow cooked uh, all morning. Um, so now it, it's done cooking and I will be taking out of the pot and it's starting uh, to chop, cut up. Cut it up, okay. I, I'm curious, what kind of a cut of meat is it? Is it like a roast or a steak? It's, it's, it's a roast okay. beef, yeah. Okay, um, okay. So I'll be taking out the beef right now from the pot with using the uh, what do you call this? The <laughs> is it tongs? Oh, they look like oh, tongs. Tongs. Yes, I use tongs to. Pull out one meat, and I will be start cutting when my onion's cooking. You cut it in just little uh, edible chunks, three quarter inch chunks, or something like that. Yes, like a bite size. Okay. I guess it's smaller than bite size, so that way, kind of flavorful liver when. Uh, depends on how big your bite is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is. Uh, one is smaller. When I take it out, and I am starting to cut now. Okay. Uh, don't cut in. Do you have a special method to use to cut the meat, Gab Abby? Abby. I usually. I cut meat or onion or anything. I have vegetables, anything, but usually hold with my left hand. My left hand, I right now I'm holding a piece of meat on my left hand and I'm holding knife on my right hand, but I usually make sure to put down knife on the meat and then make it sure as if I like straight down. So it doesn't go towards my hand. And then when I press, I just start pressing to cut. So that way it goes down to the meat, not my hand. <laughs> you, you use your fingers to locate the knife on the meat and then press down after you get your fingers out of the way, right? Yes. Yes, okay. What about with the vegetables? How do you do that? Do you use the side of your finger as a knife guy? Yes, my always, always when I cut things, vegetables or meat or anything I cut, I um, use my left hand, my fingers to guide me to where the 
things I'm cutting and I hold my knife straight. So that way I don't cut myself and I never cut myself. So that working good to me, for me. Yes, okay. yes. Uh, handling knives is difficult, but if you get used to it, it's easy enough. You can do it safely. And if you don't feel comfortable with that, there are cutting guides and things like that. You can usually find <laughs> through uh, uh, local agencies in your area. Yes, that's it. We're still cutting. Still cutting. Abby, is it difficult to find the Ethiopian ingredients that you have in there? Or is it, or are they like, are they all over the place? Is it easy to find? So, um, yeah, I would say it's not too difficult to find in bigger cities like Seattle. I don't know how well you know about Seattle, Washington, or or like a Portland city, uh, Oregon, um, which I purchased this from Oregon because Vancouver and Oregon is right next to it. Um, so we don't, ha I don't have any problem buying, but like smaller cities don't have it. For example, Vancouver does not have an Ethiopian store or Ethiopian restaurant. And uh, now I'm putting my one meat that I cut on the plate so I can free up the cutting board. And going back to take another one out. This is a big piece of meat. Okay, now I'm starting to cut again. Did you save the broth from cooking the beef to add to the uh, pot? Uh, would you ask that question again? Uh, yes, Abby. Did you save the broth with, from when you cooked the beef? To add to the uh, to add to the pot of vegetables. Well, that's a very good question. Um, the broth I will be using as like a you don't have to, but me like if I cook meat, that broth goes into my food right now. Um, you people, some people put water, but. Some people could use that broth to cook this dish. Okay. Uh, let's go cutting. What kinds of spices do you add? Right now I have, I would say like a little bit smaller than big bite size. Um, uh, I wonder, I wonder can, yeah, I think I can show piece I cut it. Right here, like there, by size, like half of like. Uh, Abby, if you're trying to show us something, I think you're off screen. Go a little more to your left, Abby. Right, like this? No. So, yeah. Uh, to your right, to your right. I'm sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> You're going to have to move over a little bit, Abby, the other way. There you go. Oh. You're out of screen all together. We need to see it. I'd love to look oh, no, at it. No, no. She's, she's there. She's there. What happened? Oh, you, freeze oh, you can't see it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you are. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't I, mean I, to I, laugh I, about this. The screen froze up. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I definitely can't. I thought you can't see me, so <laughs> yeah. It's like a half bite size, like I would say bite size. Like as long as you cut, you don't have to dice like onions, but it has to be a little bit bigger than that. Yeah. So here it is. I'm gonna go back to cutting. Oh, I should start a little bit. So when onions. Cooking, I usually constantly stir to make sure it's cooking good. Now, 
make sure it doesn't stick the pot too. Um, <laughs> you bring that? No, that won't come to a boil if you just got it on medium high, will it? It'll just simmer, right? Yes. So it's cooking now, really good. Does it smell like onions? Oh yeah, <laughs> it's a it's a giving really good smell, flavors uh, it's delicious too. Uh, cutting again, I have a few more to go. My a little, uh, a little renews it onion scent. Yeah, <laughs> it's a very delicious smell. <laughs> Uh, okay, cutting, still cutting. Um, so this kind of cigarwood or a lot of Ethiopian food can be spicy or like we have a spicy and not spicy food. Um, vegetable dish is usually not that spicy unless you wanted to make it spicy. Um, There's the name of it. Siga Wood, right? Am I pronouncing that right? Okay, Siga Wood. Um, yes. what, what kind of spices do you use in it? Um, uh, they have this called Barbare. I will be showing you soon. When onion cooks, I will be adding Barbare. But the Barbare is a chili pepper, red one, they dry in the ground and it's like a powder. Okay. It's very spicy. Okay. Yes. And uh, that it, it, that's the one that's a hard, you have a hard time finding that one? Uh, I don't have any hard time finding those because I'm close to the Ethiopian store. Everything I am I have here is from Ethiopian store. Okay, you have an Ethiopian store there, okay. Yes. Uh, we will have a list of all of these things uh, in the recipe. Is that right? Yes, that's okay. right. <laughs> and it's already it's already on our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Excellent. All right, now I finished cutting. I'm just waiting until onion cooks really well because it's tastes good when it cooks good. Um, you know, Ellen, I was thinking something the other day and, and uh, Abby, um, this is interesting because when I looked this recipe up, it basically what they call it is like a spicy stew. A stew. You know what's wonderful is like you go from country to country to country and it seems like a lot of the food is very similar to one another, like just crossing over. I think that was the coolest part. Yeah. Well, you bring up a good point, but when you come with when you come to cooking things, there are certain basic ingredients, you know, uh, onions, carrots, vegetables, beef, right. chicken, fish. And then you get into the individual spices, which makes it individual to that country. But you're right. The basic ingredients are all the same. Right, right, right. And they're all delicious. So another thing, another thing about me is that when I cook, I clean dishes as I go, so I don't end up with a million dishes in the kitchen. <laughs> so we try not to think about that part. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yes, you know, if you sit around, the stuff dries on there. It's hard to get cleaned off. <laughs> and we've got Ari waiting in the wings. Hey, Ari. Well, see, there's another advantage to having a guide dog. <laughs> They're great on getting dishes clean, aren't you, Belle? Well, Belle, right. Belle, what are you doing? Sleeping over there? She's over at her bed sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Chicken still, I mean, no, onion still cooking. I put a little bit high. I had it before medium high, but I decided to put a little bit high so um, I can have really good um, cooking onion. I cook onion like maybe like five minutes to 
seven or whatever. Like if I put medium high, I cook longer. If I put high, it's kind of oh, cooks faster. So now it's a cooking. I don't know if you all can hear it. My hat's sizzling all good. It's just at the right temperature. <laughs> yes. I, I tend to use my ears and my sense of touch. My, the, I can feel how hot things are. Well, I can't tell you exactly, but I can tell you what's too hot. My ears, my nose, and my fingers. <laughs> So have you added the meat to the uh, pot of vegetables? Not yet, because uh, full time this time, onion cooking. Onion has to cook really good before I do that. So right now I have in the pot is just onions, bunch of onions cooking. Um, And I'm stirring constantly because you don't want to just put onion and forget about it. So it doesn't have run out of water or, or even. Yes, keep an, I always keep an eye on what you're doing when you're cooking. When the stove That's is on, you don't want to be more than an arm length away from it. Um, mm -hmm. About how long does it take to cook the onions down? Um, I want to say, I, I like to honestly like five minutes or like a five to 10 minute. I, when you put more onions, it's good to cook more longer. Like I have two big onions now, but you can put four big onions if you want, even like a more. Make a large like, Yeah, it's like a more like onion based type of dish. Um, okay. Now I will be adding a little bit um, diced garlic. Yum. Garlic. A lot of garlic. Um, I, I like can garlic. smell it over I like here. <laughs> I don't think me after I eat them, but I like them. <laughs> That's when you know when so, who your real friends are, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm putting one scoop of garlic in, another slow scoop. I mean, you, I use two cloves. I put on my recipe, but I, because if you like garlic, you can put a lot. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, and you can stay with the recipe or you can put more garlic if you want, but I like more garlic. It doesn't hurt. So happening. Now we have onion and the garlic together cooking. Um, and I'm gonna switch to medium. Oh yeah, I already switched to medium high. <laughs> um, then garlic aside. How how much garlic was that? <laughs> um, how much is it? <laughs> was that was that? Oh, that's the uh, already chopped up garlic, right? Was it like a couple of teaspoons? Yes, I put two teaspoons, and but two two teaspoons is good, but one teaspoon and like a. Depends how how the people like their their food, and I get very excited when gar more garlic. But yeah, two cloves of garlic is typical. Um, and you chop this garlic. You got a, a raw clove of garlic and chopped it up, and then you use the two teaspoons in yours. Is that the way you did it? Well, I supposed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, I'm super busy, so I bought like a chopped up 
garlic. Uh, uh, you do what I do. Yes, it's in my refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, nice little jar. Yeah. It's okay. All about saving time. If I'm in Ethiopia, definitely I have to ground all my fresh garlic and the and the machine yeah. or like on the, anything that um that dices the the garlic and the and the um onion. Yes, yes. There's little time saving things because it is difficult to work with garlic. I even have a garlic press. Uh, I, I think sometimes fresh garlic is better tasting, but the other stuff is so much easier. Exactly, yes. Oh, okay, now I'll be putting Barbara chili, chili, chili powder. Ah, there. okay. Chili powder, okay. That's what that is. Okay. <laughs> Chili powder for sure is a called Barbara. It's a very red. Too bad you can't see inside here. That's a lot of chili powder. <laughs> um, I am not using the whole thing, but it's called the Barbara, but chili pepper that ground super, super spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I will be putting three spoons of that. Three tablespoons, teaspoons. Yes, a regular spoon. What? What? I'm using a regular spoon. Actually, I should use. I usually use regular spoon because I like spicy. Okay. A regular teaspoon. Yeah, I can use teaspoon for now, but I don't have to. It's like a we. Basically, don't worry about it. If it doesn't spice, you know what I want. Okay. <laughs> this isn't a measuring spoon. This is like a regular spoon. Yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, it's a regular spoon I am using. We don't use measuring spoon that much for especially putting the spices in. Right now, I scooped one full regular spoon and pouring into the pot. One in, and I stir a little bit in the trim medium, not, not medium, but oh, not medium high, now it's medium. And another spoon, regular spoon full. Um, I love spicy, so I might add or I um, I keep it this way, but people can put either two spoon, one spoon, or three spoon, or whatever it works. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> but I like spicy, so there you go. That'll open the sinuses up. <laughs> it's very good. Like, if you can see my hand, it's super red because it's still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super good stuff. So oh. this is a fairly spicy dish. Yeah, so I am still using uh, the water, measuring cup of water before I put with onion. I have not added any more water yet that's still cooking with onion. I added garlic and I put the uh, barbary the spiky stuff in the stirring and it's not juicy anymore. It's a little like thick and, and kind of sort of going to dry if I don't add water in right now, okay. but make sure it doesn't dry inside. Make sure it's stirring, stirring and yeah. have it. Yeah, you don't it. want it to burn. Yes, you don't right. want to burn. Yeah, you got to keep an eye on it or keep it yeah, on Yeah, and the You got to keep stirring. Yeah. <laughs> I have water right next to you, so you have. If it, if you think it's gonna go burnt, you can quickly add water. So right now, I have measuring cup, one cup of water, right here, next to me. I'll be adding. So, and. 
This is all done in one pot, isn't it? Or it's if you have to cook the beef separately, yes. No, no, beef and other stuff. Beef, Ethiopian butter, a um, little bit oil I put it because it's really good. It's not added yet. I will, I will add yes, you, you can cook everything in one pot. There's not a lot of uh, things to clean up yes. afterwards. Yes, yes, one pot. We've still got Ari in the wings. Okay. Yep, still here. <laughs> hey, Ari. Hello. All right, now I am putting a little bit of oil. Okay. Little bit, like to make onion and garlic and and the and the chili powder go really smooth. Um, tiny oil. Say so maybe a uh, tablespoonful. Yeah. <laughs> Olive oil. Um, um, I would say I guess a pump a little bit from the thing, but usually some people use the lead to measure it. But it's good to measure if they don't want a lot of them uh, oil. But I am kind of weird. I like. But cooking is something you can do to your taste. Yes. I always do to my taste, even like make up my mac and cheese. I'm famous mac and cheese I make. I use it for my, my taste. No, no. Not actually, that's okay. <laughs> okay, and now, I don't know if you can hear sizzling, but still is not um, done yet, but I'm putting one cup of, measuring cup of water now. There's onion, garlic, uh, oil, and uh, Barbara chili powder together, and I put another measuring cup of water to just soak it up. All the stuff out, all the spices in. Oh. With the onions and all those spices in there, I bet that smells spectacular. Oh, it smells, it's like I can't wait until I like <laughs> 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 Okay, we're going to have smell-o-vision. <laughs> there you go. I will. Thanks to Renee for asking me to do this good pressure. Now I have, a, this is Ethiopian butter. It's like a cultured and um, they boiled and it's really pure butter. Uh, they call it kibe. And it's very expensive. So it's all the different type of seasonings in it and um, it's really good. Um, so it's in the cup, um, they sell it in the cup because they they uh, make this boil and stuff. So they filter the very purified butter, Ethiopian. You only find it in an Ethiopian store. Okay. So I'll be putting one spoon of that right now. One regular spoon, not measuring. <laughs> <laughs> what was that show with all the pinches and the dabs and the? You remember that? No, I don't remember. I don't oh, remember which show. Not too long ago, they were measuring the pinches and dabs, and I remember doing that too. You put in a pinch, and that's how much a pinch. Well, I don't know. I think everybody's grandma always did that. A pinch of this, oh, a bunch of that. Is. Adding butter. Doom. <laughs> uh, I kind of sometimes I put one spoon, sometimes I put more because I kind of love it. So, um, but uh, usually I put one spoon butter uh, from beginning, like now everything's cooking, and one spoon when 
um, when it's done, when I was um, turning up, I add some and it's right around. Oh my gosh, the smell is killing me. <laughs> I'll bet that does smell good. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, oh, medium. All right, now I have onion, garlic, oil, barbare with chili powder, uh, butter, and it's sauteing. And right now, this is the time for me to add um, meat. Uh, meat, I cut it up before. Yes. And here's the meat. It's on the plate that I piled up. And I'll be adding the meat into the pot. So here you go. I dump it all at once. The center of that pot to put the meat in is a tough thing. I'd do that. Yes, I. So I, I have onion, chili powder, uh, garlic oil, and Ethiopian butter. And now I added meat top of it, and I will be stirring all together. Stirring it, still doing it. <laughs> Stir it up, all mixed up, and I'm gonna put lead for like maybe two minutes and then add the uh, beef broth. The broth, okay. Is that the final, uh, is that the final part of it, the broth? Yeah, yes, because when you put everything, meat and onion, everything cooked, you need to put either water or broth to make it more um, cooked, mixed together and the cook so enough food for you to put on the injera. I will show you injera real quick soon when I, I, I cover up those. <laughs> Do you put it over potatoes or rice or is it just by itself? Oh no, it's injera, injera is like, a, um, injera is, looks like a tortilla, definitely it's not tortilla, but wider, thinner, very oh. spongy. Okay. Uh, it's like a braid, um, but like a, it made of teff. Um, you buy that, you can't make that. that um, I oh, mean, okay. <laughs> yeah, you buy from Ethiopian store. I didn't I make see. it because I don't have, I mean, you could eat with, French bread or like, you know, you could eat with anything you like, but injera is what you're supposed to serve with. Also, you can put a top of rice too, if you want to. Okay. Well, thank you, Aria. Um, no, I'm sorry, thank you, Abby. <laughs> Abby, while you're finishing that up, can we go to Ari and she can start her um, cornbread? Definitely, now I'm adding beef broth and that's actually stir it up and that's end of cooking so definitely I I can um I can show you in Jera the bread that look like tortilla if you want real quick but otherwise that's everything. Well we'd like to see the uh, finished product you just finished cooking. Can you hold that for us so the camera can see it? What yes, you just finished cooking in the pot. Uh, yes. You know what I was thinking that um, this this beef stew would actually go pretty well with uh, Ari's uh, cornbread. Uh, oh, that yes. sounds like a great yeah. idea. Yeah, I was thinking that sounds an awful lot like beef stew, but I bet those spices are amazing. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, the yeah. The butter sounds interesting, too. I so can you see this whole... Bunch. Ah. This well, is I like can, the, somebody can. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, it's like yes, yeah. It's like a it's like a spongy type of bread. Yes, like let me take one out because I'm eating after you made me me cook <laughs> this stuff. I gotta start eating, right? <laughs> okay, your your phone. Like, okay. <laughs> 
Yeah, we need to here pretty good. Uh, this is a piece. This is a one piece, like I just rip it up. Okay. <laughs> but I, yeah, that's how how you put on the plate flat and you scoop the stuff I just made it in the middle and you eat. If you know how to eat like a quesadilla or a tortilla, it's it's not like that, but you usually rip similar. up and draw. Yeah, similar. It's similar idea. But you do have to, you can pour on the injera, the sauce I made, or you can dip it in to the sauce and wrap it up and eat. However, you you can get juicy good food. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really good, Abby. Thank yeah. you so much, Abby, for showing us your absolutely delicious sounding Ethiopian traditional dish. And uh, thank you for giving me chance to make a delicious lunch. Yeah, oh, thank you for, for joining us. Now, Aria Wyatt joins us. And I hear tell that she loves people and she really loves to cook. Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome, Aria. Hey, y'all. <laughs> hey, Aria. Aria. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself and about your journey through blindness. Uh, well, let's see. I'm a proud native of the chocolate state. And uh, <laughs> I was born in Virginia, but I lost it as a baby due to cancer, like you just mentioned. Uh, it's been a journey. I wouldn't say it's been all sunshine and cupcakes, but it hasn't been horrible either. Um, I've definitely had to overcome a lot of adversity. Uh, let me think. You just mentioned that uh, Pennsylvania is the chocolate state, right? It is indeed. And that's because of Hershey, Pennsylvania, right? That is correct. Well, is it our state like Hershey? Hershey chocolate? Hershey <laughs> chocolate. Hershey <laughs> kisses. Our street lambs, specifically in Hershey, Pennsylvania, the street lambs are shaped like the kisses. Oh, no, wow. I'd like to go see that sometime. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's cool. <laughs> wow. So I understand that you've chosen to get involved with the mental health field. Uh, as a profession. Is that right? Um, I did at one point. Uh, my direction in life has changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I still want to take care of people and still be there for everybody, but I think I need to do it in a different way. Okay. Uh, there's always room for improvement and change. Absolutely. I agree with that. That's an interesting story. Now, I understand you're going to show us how to make your homemade cornbread. Is that right? Yep, that is correct. All so, right. tell us what you're doing right now. Well, right now, I'm cleaning up a giant mess of butter that I just made. So, <laughs> there's that. So, we like to keep it real here on Cooking Without Looking. Absolutely. I do it too all the time. In fact, I just cleaned up a little mess a while ago. Um, oh, are, yeah. are you totally blind or do you have a little eyesight now? I am completely blind. Totally blind. Okay. Do you have a guide dog? I do not, but I've definitely thought about it. They make wonderful cleanup in the kitchen. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Although I think that they might, I think my guide dog might have a little too much fun with this one. <laughs> all right now that we got that mishaps out of the way we can have some fun y'all gonna walk with me let's walk <laughs> all right so cornbread is one of my personal favorites oh, i guess i don't need this anymore so we'll just go ahead and get rid of that um all right let's see what we got here we got three bowls here Two of them have mysteries, the other one doesn't. All right, so we got a bowl of dry ingredients. 
I'm sorry. Are they pre-measured ingredients? Yes. I uh, didn't exactly know how to go about this. So I figured I would uh, get everything ready and we can hit the ground running. All right. So we got a large bowl right here, as y'all can see. We got your cornmeal, your flour, bacon soda, bacon powder, all that good stuff. And then over here in this bowl, we got all the wet ingredients. You got your eggs, your buttermilk. Oh, actually, no, we don't. We don't have that yet. That's <laughs> right. We can fix that. How are you can just keep the phone in one place. Got you. All right. I'm pretty sure that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch this up a little bit. There you Put go. My 90s kids. Where my 90 kids at? Y'all remember this? <laughs> I remember this. Sitting at the lunch table, struggling to get the milk carton open. Oh, yeah. Um, that's no all of us. Hey, I date back to the day when they had that little cardboard plug in the top of a glass bottle. Yeah, yeah. Remember those? I, I think I came in between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're going to add our buttermilk here. All right. Okay, now that we got everything, here's what we're going to do next. I also like to clean as I go. Because it just makes it 10 times easier. And that means I don't have as much to pick up. All right. I don't know how on earth we're going to mix this all together without a mixer. But we'll figure it out. Are you mixing it by hand or are you going to use an electric mixer? I'm going to use an electric, electric mixer. But for now, I do want to use a, a wooden spoon to kind of mix all the dry ingredients together and make sure everything is all meshed well. So we're going to do that. There we go. Look at that. Mm -hmm. That's all the dry ingredients. <laughs> all the dry stuff. And then we're gonna pull out the mixer because we're gonna add a little something, something. The wet ingredient. We're gonna whisk all of this together, at least the wet ingredients at least until they're blended. And uh, recommendation, anybody out there looking for a new hand mixer? I recommend this. Good Hamilton Beach. They got a specific hand mixer that's got six speeds. It also comes with a little storage case that you could just snap on. Look how convenient and compact is this. You oh, know, I was going to mention that. I've never seen that. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, you've never seen this? All right. Huh. Oh, yes. Let's game changer right here. Game changer right here. Also, also, I highly recommend stainless steel mixing bowls as compared to the plastic ones because they're a lot more sturdy and, well, it's just more clean, I guess, if we want to look at it that I, way. I prefer stainless, too. So we want to hook this the up. The glass are nice, but they don't hold up well when you drop them on tile floors. And it also comes with... Inside, we got two beaters and an egg whisk. Interesting. And it is all conveniently stored in a case, which I really like. So we're gonna move that. And uh, get stuff situated without knocking anything over. Okay. <laughs> all right, let's get to whisking. I'm gonna do this on low since it's what ingredient? We don't want to mix it up too much. All right, cool. Now, from there, we are going to take this and we're just going to kind of get everything together and uh, we're going to make a hole in this well. It's okay to get your hands dirty. Yeah, you know, it's heard of. Use them. That's what they're there for. <laughs> I heard Rachel Ray say something once about her grandma telling her that, that you know, she's got the perfect mixers right at the end of her arms. 
Mm-hmm. Pretty much. I had a friend. Um, we made cookies together one time and we did not have a mixer. And uh, I wasn't exactly too pleased about it because I was like, Ew, I don't want to touch nothing with my hands. <laughs> but then once uh, once we started, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was actually kind of fun. So, all right. So now that we got, we made a hole up in here. Hold on. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, I was going to mention about this mixer too. There's a beater eject button. Mm-hmm. Wow. If anybody was wondering. Okay. So we got our hole in the well here. So from there, we are going to take our liquid ingredients and we're going to dump this baby in here. <laughs> Yeah. And you're centering it over there so you know where you're pouring that, right? Yes. You know, I, I do wish that. Never, never try to lift the beaters while the mixer is still running. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then how am I going to put these in? Maybe. Is this like a family recipe or is it one that you found along the way? I just found it along the way. I'm actually the only, uh, at least to my knowledge, I'm the only one in my family right now that knows how to make cornbread from scratch because uh, when the last person that made cornbread from scratch was my grandmother, my great grandmother. So we never knew the recipe. Otherwise, that would be easy to her. But if you don't, I have to look it up. Huh. Of course, you do have warm bread mixes too. But let's be honest, they keep putting stuff in our food that they ain't got no business putting in there. So you may as well just make it from scratch, okay? <laughs> well, you can make it the way you like it. Sometimes it's fun to put jalapenos in it. You could probably do that. I, <laughs> I don't know who on shows. earth. No, 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 no. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of creativity that we could put into this, but no, nah, we don't, no. Nah, we don't You're a purist. No You're here. a purist, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. I'm pretty sure. No, we're going to do this a couple more minutes. That is interesting. I bet you could add things to cornbread. I kind of like it the way it is with a lot of butter on it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now that we got that done, we can hit that beater eject button and we can take these beaters out. Just this. Ooh, that feels nice and creamy. Uh No, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that. (laughs) We're gonna gorgeous. I'll just tip it a little more. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that gorgeous? All right. So now that we have that, we're ready to bake it. Rule number one when it comes to bacon, you see this right here? Mm-hmm. Y'all run to the store and get yourself some bacon spray. It's got <laughs> flour bacon in it. Spray, yes, I, I have it in my cabinet now. It's got flour in it. And trust me, those of you out there who like to bake, this is going to be your best friend. Okay? <laughs> All right. So we're going to dump that in here. And as usual, you're going to want to need a spatula, a spatula <laughs> to scrape everything out. And of course, if you got someone nearby, have them lift the bowl for you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I do not. My guide dog is right here, but I'd rather lick it myself. Yeah, I'm more of a cake batter licker, you know that. Not the, not the. uh, Never go wrong with cake. Uh, (laughs) I've I've never had cornbread batter, but it does sound pretty good. Sure. If you're hungry, you know. We don't like it. I personally don't like it. I think cake batter. I'm with Renee on that one. I think it's way <laughs> Oh, okay. I like cake batter. Okay. You have tried cornbread batter. How about you, Belle? My guide dog came over and joined me. I'm not, I don't think you can see her, but 
She's right here by my side. You can hear her, I'm sure. So now that we have that, we're just gonna give it a little, little tapity tap tap, make sure it's even. And what I like to do, I like to take this wooden spoon. I just kind of like to spread the batter around, make sure it's even as possible. You even it out by feel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, because it's sort of a semi-liquid sort of stuff, it tends to even itself out pretty well, right? By itself? It does, but for me, I kind of like it to be like, I don't know how to describe it. You don't want the edges to roll over at the edge, right? Yeah. yeah so I kind of like to spread it out. But all right, we got that. Now, here's where the fun part begins. Okay. We are going to stick this in the oven and we are going to cook this for about 25 minutes. I don't think it'll take that long because it's already been preheated. So we got that. Preheat your oven how hot? You want it to be at 400. 400, okay. And then we are going to set timer for 25 minutes. Okay, I guess not. Siri don't want to listen today. Let <laughs> me get this figure out. Oh, okay. Check timer. I know, because you didn't do it. <laughs> Set timer for 23 minutes. Thank you. I All right. That before too. I have little electronic timers that I like to use. I have so many timers, but that's because I'm always cooking. Um, all right. So while that's done, while that's cooking, um, yeah, help me clean up. Because <laughs> we got a mess. A mess, a mess. I will say, while I'm doing this, it's not easy not having a dishwasher when you have to cook everything from scratch. It is time consuming. Abby, do you by any chance have a finished product already that you could show us? Well, this is uh, B. I don't want to interrupt, but my food is done and I have to go back to work. Uh, but I have very, very delicious food. Uh, so the meat is mixed, all the broth is in, and it's absolutely delicious. It smells delicious and tastes delicious. I just want to say thank you and go to work. I work from home, which is good. This is the day I choose because I can work from home. Uh, but um, sorry for talking too much. And I'm going to wait to eat when it cools down. If any, any question you have, definitely email me and stuff. And I, yeah. And we will have your recipe at our website. Uh, if I'm correct, Renee, www.cookingwithoutlookingtvshow.wordpress. Just TV, just TV. Cooking Without Looking TV. Dot, dot WordPress. WordPress. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say no, okay, no. I'll get that one more time a little bit here. Thank you again <laughs> so much for that, Abby. And uh, Aria. How yeah. are you doing back here? Uh, we have it's a finished product that you can show us through the magic of TV. Unfortunately, not right now, because I just put it in there. But OK, there we go. Um, sorry about that. Um, anyways, it is not done yet, unfortunately. But um, it should be done in about 15-ish minutes. But once the toothpick comes out clean, we'll be good to go. 
Well, uh, you know what? What you could do is um, uh, send or post post your um, post the finished product on on my page, okay? And we'll share it with everyone. I can only I can. imagine how wonderful that kitchen's gonna smell when that stuff's about that. Oh and, yeah, and uh, I, it's barely been cooking, and I'm already hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for appearing on the Cooking Without Looking TV show. We loved having you with us. Yes, thank you. Let's see, both Abby and Aria, again, thank you so very much for joining us on our Cooking Without Looking TV show. And also a special thank you to the Blind United for all of your support. Um, if you'd like today's recipes, as well as past recipes, please go to our website at www dot cooking without looking tv dot wordpress dot com and if you would like to enjoy today's show or past shows please go to the cooking without looking youtube channel and please remember to like and subscribe if you happen to teach people who are blind or visually impaired Please feel free to use our show for your students. There's no charge for using them. And many teachers around the United States, as well as more than 60 countries around the world, now use our Cooking Without Looking TV show to teach their students. Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, also, uh, check out our Cooking Without Looking podcast on Spotify and iHeartRadio, or anywhere you get your favorite podcasts. We're also available on all Alexa-enabled in, uh, devices. <laughs> so if you would like to donate to Vision World Foundation to help us change the way we see blindness, please go to our website at www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com and click on the link at the top of the page. Or for more information, please call area code 305-200-9104 and look for our next show in September. So on behalf of Annette, oh, I hope you're feeling better soon, Renette, and Renee Rentmeester, and all of us at the Cooking Without Looking TV show and Vision World Foundation, Thank you very much. And Annette, this is your byline. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you, Alan.